Hi, and welcome to the Sabbath Christian Church's online sermon. Everybody has to face it sometime or another. The uh, children of Israel had to face the Passover, and Egypt had to face the Passover. Now, what this face means is something part of language. Now, the basic language that we have is, of course, our verbal language, which is written down, but it's, it's verbal in its essence. But a person's face can also communicate and express a language of a person's inner, innate feelings of things. We're going to look at the negative faces that uh, represent the Egypt that was not willing to face the Passover and do what God said to do on that day. A few did. Now, no matter how hard the inner person tries to uh, hide his face expression and everything, it doesn't succeed. This is a body language and the face, of course, is right there with the body. So what the face is saying to us leads us on the way to the person. This particular word always occurs in the pure, uh, plural and indicated of the fact that the face is a combination of a number of features. The eyes can express. It's almost impossible. Good actors and actresses can put a good face on. But a person that's really into faces can't hide it entirely. So the eyes give an expression, the nose, the eyebrows, one or both, lips and mouth, the ears behind the face. Interestingly, that they use face in connection with Passover. Uh, behind the face, particularly the forehead, is the brain and the mind. So being that close to the uh, control of a human being, particularly his, uh, uh, everything that the nerves do to the body, as, as well as controlling the face and the language and everything, it's right there, right behind the face. Now, let's take a look at the negative kinds of things of face. It is, uh, it is defined uh, identifies the person and reflects the attitude and sentiments of the person. It can be a substitute for the self or the feelings of the self. So when the use of face doesn't have to mean face in that sense that it is an expression of feeling. Now in the Bible the face along with other parts of the body is described not merely as an exterior instrument of one's physiology but in some form of behavioral pattern. It says that that way we say it more linguistically, as characterized by the personal qualities. Let's take a look at some of the hard faces. A hard face is indicative of defiance. This is the face that Egypt put on when God said, do what I told you to do, kill the lamb, put the blood around the doorpost, and so forth. <clears throat> and Jeremiah says, Lord, do not uh, your eyes look for the truth. They have smitten them. They have not weakened. They have consumed them. They have refused to take correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to repent. So you have a face there that is so defined, so set, it is set in stone, in rock, because they won't. They will not repent. Another face is imprudence, impudence. In the Proverbs it says that they may keep you from an adulteress, from a foreigner who flatters with words. So she sees him and kissed him with a brazen face, an impudent face, and it says that to him. So a person's face, if they're not trying to hide the face, really gives tremendous expression, particularly the, particularly as we're talking about it, the uh, hardened face, the ruthless face. She said to him, ruthless. That's what the face said. A nation of fierce countenance 
will have no respect for the old, no sure favor for the young. So this brazen face, this woman goes after the poor uh, teenager here, and then uh, the uh, other people in defiance will, uh, will show no favor to the young. They're ruthless. Of course, we have the shining face, which we'll get to uh, in a lot more later on. But just to switch over from the hard face to the shining face is evidence of joy. And Job says that I smiled on them when they did not believe. See, back to the belief, back to the ruthless, back to the hard. And the light of my face did not cast down. He went on with the light because he was a believer. And they, uh, the opposite again is the shamed face. His shining face did not do that. It didn't shame them. And shamed face points to defeat, frustration, and humility. So the person who is ashamed of what happened will show that in their the frustration. You mentioned the frustration with things that just don't go. And Samuel says it this way. Then Joab came to the house of the king and said, Today you have covered with shame the faces of all your servants, who today have saved your life. He did not care. And the lives of your sons and daughters the lives of your wives and the lives of your concubines. And he said, you are covered with shame. This is the face showing off those emotions. We can see the person and what the, what's inside the person by the person's face. A flaming face is one convulsed by terror. wonder what the feeling of the Egyptians were as the firstborn began to die because they would not listen and obey God. Isaiah says they will be terrified. Pains and anguish will take hold of them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look at one another in astonishment. Their faces are flame. Imagine the blood rushing to the faces and making the face red. In astonishment, they're afraid. Pains and anguish. No. This is not the hard face anymore. This is a face that's been defeated, that's been brought down by God's ways and will. But uh, the person who will, they will not change no matter what. In stone, the faces are. He said, an evil face is marked by distress and anxiety. Isn't that interesting? You think an evil face would be one that would command you know, I'm not doing this face. He says, why is your face so sad? He says in uh, uh, as the Pharaohs. Uh, why is your face so sad? It, it doesn't work the way the uh, evil would want people to think about. A fallen face from very strong anger or displeasure. So get the, remember what uh, Cain did. He, uh, when he made his offering, God had no regard for it, so Cain became very angry, and his countenance, a very long word for face, fell. And what did he do? You know what he did to his brother. Uh, th there's a phrase that's called to hide one's face, to show aversion or disgust. He was despised and forsaken uh, of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, one whom men hide their faces from. He was despised and we did not esteem him. So a person is not hiding one's face or hiding his emotions and everything. It is to show aversion and disgust. That's to hide one's face. The negative things of face built on the rock. To turn away the face is to reject. For the David, your servant, do not tame, turn away the face of your anointed. Keep that smiling face uh, there, out there to show. Raise the face, show favor, respect and acceptance, or show partiality and favoritism. More on this. Amen, and thank you for watching and listening.